Guess what? He said it again. I got a new motorcycle. So stay tuned and find out what the heck I got. We now have three motorcycles to our motorcycle family. You know, today we got something that we're going to bring to you from the Mecom auction, but mainly what it's going to be about is the trucking company. That's right. Hall Bikes. They're here and they're going to explain a little bit about what they do and how they can help you if you need to get your motorcycle somewhere in the country. That's right. And well, later on after this, we also have another video in another day about the Sturgis Rally and what they can do for you there. So today we're going to show you what they do at the Mecom auction. So let's get to it. Let's go. And then hang around, you'll see my new bike. So my name is Brittany, this is Takesha. We're from Hall Bikes. We're here working the Mecom auction. You can find us outside of the Cinch Saloon. Um, so basically what we're doing here is we're taking in orders for the motorcycle auction. Um, during the auction, you would visit www.hallbikesorders.com. Um, we make it pretty simple. So you either place an initial order or an add-on order. Um, and then that gets filtered through to us and we get your order placed and work with Mecham to get your bike out of here right away. Um, once we have the paperwork that we need, we will remove your bike from the auction floor and take it down and start loading it out and transporting it to our Las Vegas, Nevada warehouse. Um, also on that haulbikesorders.com page, we do have all of the shipping information. So there's a price breakdown throughout the contiguous United States. We do not service Mexico or Canada, it's just the 48. Um, so there's price breakdowns as far as discounts. If you book between two and three bikes, you get $25 off per unit. If you book four or more bikes, you start getting $50 off per unit. We do have options to increase our insurance. Every single bike will come with a $15,000 damage insurance policy, followed up by a $500 deductible. There are options to eliminate your deductible increase your overall insurance to ensure the safety and security of your unit. For this auction only, we do take certain select, um, certain select palletized and crated units. Um, typically what we do is we strap the bikes down along the E-track of the trailer. It's a roll-on, roll-off service with an 11-foot lift gate on the back of the truck, um, so there's no palletizing or crating involved. We will take um, certain documents and boxes that will come with the unit. So for us, we're starting to load bikes now. Um, so when we're loading out, we have to be out of here by 5 p.m. on the 31st. So by that time, whether somebody's booked or not, we take all the units out. Um, from that point, if you did not book shipping with us by the end of the auction, we will um, address that at that point. There'll be a different way to book um, but they will be stored safely in our Las Vegas, Nevada warehouse for you to either pick up or we can establish shipping even after the auction as well. Um, because right now here, we are doing everything that's live and current. We have a team back at home that is fully prepared to answer any questions as well um, and then can walk you through the process of booking post-auction. Um, so to reach that team, you would dial 414-464-7576 that brings you directly to customer service and they will take care of you at that point. A broader estimate of eight weeks from auction to delivery. Perfect. Now, realistically, that might vary depending upon where you're going in the country. Right now, there's weather throughout the United States. You know, if you're coming, going from Las Vegas to Maine, it might take that full eight weeks. But if we're just transporting from Vegas to California or Arizona, something closer, what we're trying to do is put together full loads and get everything that's relatively local out and gone right away. So it just kind of depends. The further you get away, it might take a little bit longer. Um, but all of our drivers, they have uh, motorcycle endorsements. Everybody that's been here, or everybody that is here, has worked an auction before. You know, we, even outside of the Mecham auction, we're fully prepared to handle, um, you know, vintage, antique motorcycles. We're experienced with just about everything. Um, so our drivers, you know, we're all motorcycle enthusiasts. I can think of maybe less than a handful of people in this company that don't ride. Um, so we care on a much deeper level. You know, we treat every single bike like it is our own. You know, the point is, is to deliver it from point A to point B. It's exactly how we picked it up. Can, for the Mecham auction, we do residential deliveries. Correct. Um, we'll come directly to your home. There might be an instance because we do have, you know, the truck is a 53 foot trailer. So altogether it's 80 to 90 feet long when the lift gates dropped. So we do have some restrictions as far as um, we don't go into gated communities, um, cul-de-sacs, dead ends. It, it's got to be safe. 
essentially, but we will do everything that we can to get as close as possible. Um, and, and it just really boils down to the size of our trucks. And um, also the drivers do contact them the day yes, before to make those absolutely. arrangements with you um, to ensure that we're able to meet you at a certain location that's safe for the driver as well as that customer. Yep, so when you book with us, um, you would get an automatic order confirmation. Mm -hmm. Dispatch is already tracking that we're doing this auction, so they're trying to get things planned out right away. Um, as far as the notification process goes, we send notifications once the bike is picked up. And picked up, at least for the auction, is a notification when we remove it from this lo um, the South Point to our Las Vegas, Nevada warehouse. Correct. From there, depending on where you're going in the country, we do have five warehouses. So there's Las Vegas, Oklahoma City, Florida, Pennsylvania, and Milwaukee. So depending on where you're going, there are going to be warehouses in between. So say you're shipping from Las Vegas to New York City. So we would transfer it from the South Point to our Las Vegas, Nevada warehouse, most likely route it through our Oklahoma City warehouse up to our Pennsylvania warehouse and then out for delivery to New York. So as far as notifying for that, we would let you know when your bike moves to one warehouse, another warehouse, and then there is an no email notification that goes out for delivery first that would give you a three-day window. And that three-day window consists of the day before our driver arrives, the day of, and the day after. So the day before, the driver will call the customer and you know make sure that the location's good, the time is good, and just finalize everything to make sure that the delivery goes as smoothly as possible. And then typically what they do the day of, they'll call, you know, if there's a request, you know, to call a certain amount of time out, we'll do that. But typically, you know, a few hours out, we'll give a call and, you know, reaffirm the time given the day before. Um, and then we, we bring you your dream. Hi, my name is Chris Nolan. I run Alley and I Garage. We're based out of Las Vegas, Nevada. We do bead roll art and custom engravings. Uh, I'm actually doing a demonstration piece right now with a Harley Davidson logo. Uh, everything we make is custom ordered, so any kind of idea you have for any anniversary gifts, birthday presents, uh, someone just bought their house, uh, we can make all kinds of different uh, artwork for that kind of thing. You can go to teamallyandi.com. It's uh, T-E-A-M-A-L-I-N-I.com. And we're on Facebook and Instagram. Just look for Ally and I Garage. That's how you stencil that on? Is that how you do it? I use a CNC machine to engrave the image before I come out. And now what I'm doing is I'm passing it between the two metal two uh, plastic rollers, and now you can see the shape that's been put into the metal. So $50, Alex. Three of them for 50 bucks. We're going to make lamps out of them. Somebody get three. $100 bid, somebody get 100 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 bid, Indian guy out there and uh, maybe I double my money. Elevator with a nobody can one bed, one nobody can one hundred bed, with a nobody can one. I have one hundred bed, with a nobody can one hundred dollar bed. Somebody give a hundred. One hundred, one hundred, two hundred, two hundred bed, with a nobody can two. I have one hundred, two hundred bed, with a nobody can two hundred elevator, with a nobody can two bed. I got two hundred porcelain signs, Harley Davidson, for four dollars, four dollars, not bad. Porcelain, so it shows you the original porcelain are worth a lot more money than your original ten signs that you've seen. Shows age of them. Got some road art. So we've won a little bit of the road art, and uh, we'll see if Tam gets it on there. I got a pinball machine, might be interested in that if it's reasonable. Uh, this Harley sign actually lights up, it's single-sided. So even today, which is Thursday, there's still bikes coming in. So it's never too late to bring your bike in. 
We got a couple bikes over here marked down, so I don't know what that issue is with these bikes that are over here. There's Ratfink. Maybe get him for the shop. If they have a Harley cash register, we might be interested in picking this up. They used to use them a lot for jewelry and such. They have an Indian cash register. Might give that a try. They got a little rat fink. Looks like he was held in the sign before. They got a bar. We might try for that. We got room to take that home. So we did get a few things. The lighted signs, I think, are going to end up going way more than we can afford. I spent about, I think she said about $700 I spent. And you got to pay 18% for buying. Some items that already sold today. Should say sold on it. So we bought all this stuff for an Indian. We figured the parts, you know, I'm gonna probably sandblast them, make them shiny, who knows what I'm gonna do with them. But I thought it'd be kind of neat to have some Indian parts. So I bought that. These guys went for like $500 for these girls. I bought some of these tanks. I'm not sure which ones I got. Maybe these, maybe. Is that the Honda one? I didn't get the Honda one. But I got three and three. No, that one I didn't get. These I might have got. And uh, the banners I really wanted, but uh, they went up to $300. A little more than I wanted to spend. So I did get some signs. Let's see the signs I got. And uh, so here, I got these two signs. I got this one. Both of these are porcelain. So it's kind of neat to have porcelain because they're, they're original. Is it double-sided? No, they're not double-sided signs. But whatever, they look pretty good. These prints from posters and stuff, which I'm not sure how authentic they are, between $600 and $1,000 each they went for. Uh, the Triumph sign, that went for pretty, oh, it is lit up. I couldn't really tell on the stage, they kept saying it was lit. lit. But, I mean, it went for five or $600 too. Uh, they had a bicycle, I think they're selling that now. They got this big giant Harley sign. If, if nobody wants it, which I imagine somebody's probably gonna bid a lot of money on it. This thing probably weighs a ton. Well, that's not too bad. But I just assume it's gonna be really hard. And it's got the sign base on it. I don't really have a pole to put it on. I wouldn't really wanna put it outside because I'd be afraid that somebody might, you know, shoot it out. This thing, I have no idea if anybody will even buy this thing. This is Thursday. We're gonna take a look at some of the bikes that's gonna be auctioned off today. Uh, Hey, there's a little 175. I'd like to get a little bike like this, but I don't know what I would do with it. My first bike was a 74 Honda 100, which was a 200 cubic inch motor. Let me turn around and look at the other side. I need glasses, I can't see. So let's see what it says. Now, this is an older one. It's a one, it's just 1969. It's got a thousand miles on it. It's got the 174 engine in it. So that wouldn't be too bad. But I don't know if I'm gonna hang around. So a lot of times like this, it really brings some really big money. It's in running condition. So that's always a good sign. Go around this other side. Hey, yeah, I'm here with Tex. So we're taking a look at some of the bikes. All these bikes that you see here are all lined up getting ready for the auction. So I'm gonna have to kind of thumb through here and if I see something that I'd like to see, it's a pretty nice looking Triumph. But I pretty much, out of the bikes I would buy, I'm pretty much mostly a Harley guy. Uh, I've been looking at some Hondas. Uh, I would consider a, uh, an Indian. But other than that, I don't know. But one of the things that I talked to a couple of people here told me was make sure if you're gonna buy a bike, first thing you need to do is look and see if you can get a manual to work on it. Because a lot of these bikes, especially when they get older, you're gonna have a heck of a time trying to find somebody that will work on it. And even to get parts. Even Tam's bike, a 2007 that we just bought yesterday, you know, that Sportster, 1200R. The problem I've already got with that is they're already, I, we called a couple of our vendors and they won't work on it. They won't do any uh, handlebars or stuff on it, so I'm gonna end up having to do the handlebars myself. But I did see that I checked out 
JNP cycles, and they do have a lot of the parts that I need to fix the bike up. You know, we can get the handlebars from them. We just got to figure out which ones to put on it. She wants kind of like the stock ones, and hers does not have that. So I'm trying to figure out what originally came stock on the 2007. I thought maybe I could find something on eBay, but I kind of looked around and I didn't see anything. So that's where I'm kind of at. So at that point, we may end up calling, see JMP Cycles down in Daytona, they have a bunch of guys down there that know a lot of stuff. Those guys that you talk to them, they're actually, most of them are mechanics too. It's a cool bike. And it looks like another one just like it. A lot of times here, they get all that collections. So down there, talking about JMP Cycles again, is we can call down there and tell him kind of what we're looking for. Hey, she needs handlebars. We need Mustang seat. She had a Mustang seat on hers, and I think I found the one that was on her bike there. So we could order that through there. So a lot of the stuff I think I can get through JMP. So we're going to call him next week. So by the time we get down there, he'll have the parts. And he works us a pretty good deal there, which I'm going to have to just ask him what he'll do for Tam for her bike. And then I'll have to do it down there. We probably can find somebody that will help us. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of tools. Maybe I can go over to Joey's and uh, I could do it, but have him just kind of supervise me if I need something. I did find some handlebars that actually, they were like 14, like apes, and she don't want that. And we could, uh, it came with all the wiring, which that was really neat. To already have the wiring already in it. So that way you just plug everything in. So I don't think I'd have a whole lot of trouble doing it. If I had to change the wiring in it, I, I can solder and I can do all that. We can put shrink wrap on the tubing and all that. So, so they're putting bikes, getting bikes ready. They're putting a lot of them back. So those are Wednesday's bikes. I didn't think they were supposed to bring them back out here. So Tam's bike should be back out here. They told me they all stay in the back. Hmm, that's interesting. Unless it's full back there. So that's really curious. Some of these bikes, uh, some of these choppers, uh, I'll have to see if I can find one here, sold only for like 1700 bucks. I mean, they were rough. So I don't know what I would have done something with it. Hands bike sticks out because it's that yellow. I don't see it at the moment. I don't think that's original color. Uh, I'm pretty sure she's probably gonna just go with a windshield. Something like this bike here's got on it. She had that on her other bike. I was kind of thinking about maybe putting a fairing on it, but I think that'd be too much for a sports shirt. Not like get a, a windshield that I could pull off. And uh, that's a, a yellow Suzuki. So, uh, I don't know, I don't see her bike. But I didn't think they were supposed to bring the bikes back out here. So I don't see her bike. So it may very well be still in the back. And, uh, so I don't see it. Now all those bikes you see over there, those all have reserves on them. So if you wanted to buy one of those bikes, you could walk through there, you could contact the desk up here, and say, hey, I'm interested in this bike. I'd like to make an offer. And then they can call the people and see if they want to sell it. So I'm a big one that I'm not, when there's reserves on bikes, I'm not interested in bidding on those. I see too many bikes. People just want stupid money. Now we've seen through here that a lot of the bikes that they sold came out fine. That they weren't asking too crazy that normally do most, like I say, out of, we've already sold about 500 bikes. So here you can see a list of how many didn't sell. Now, not these aren't. They're starting here. I don't remember seeing that chopper go through. Oh, that guy wants 150,000. They got that written on there. He wants 150,000 for this chopper. If I want to spend that kind of money, I'm going to have one built. Nothing saying there's nothing wrong with his bike, but let's see what happens. If anything here looks exciting, that you might want to get. There's like a calf racer there. So that guy, the guy wants $3,500 for that. But it's nice that they did, on some of these bikes, they put the price they want. So that way, if you walk through here and see, yeah, I'd like to have this bike, and they're not asking too much for it, maybe you want to spend the money. Here's one here, they want $1,250 for this little scooter. I mean, that's not too awful bad. So, uh, some Hondas. So uh, this is what happens. I said I should have brought up our uh, quad we have. I probably could have sold it here. They wanted 5,000. I only wanted uh, 1,500 for mine. There's a nice bike. Got the SNS motor in it. See what the guy wants for this semi. 
ten thousand bucks. I'm gonna set that by. Eh, might be worth it. There's one here, ninety-eight hundred. It's a Titan. I think I'd buy that one if I was gonna buy it. Couple Hondas. There's another one from Hollywood Bike Jam '97. Who wants eleven for that? So you can call up, and uh, even if the price isn't what you want, you can also make an offer. Like let's say that guy's asking ten thousand, you could offer him nine. He might take it. They'll call him. That that's the lowest one they'll go. Oh, that's the one they turned down. So it's not showing what. We don't know what the reserve was. Yeah, they can ask me, and I'll tell them. Okay. But that's not. Not. What asking oh, okay. Because some of them are a bad buy. Yeah, but that's what they turned down. Oh, okay. So that one. Chopper up there, they, they were offered 150000 and they turned that down? 15000 Oh, 15000 okay. Okay, so I was wrong. The prices that they show are what the last bid was, so it's not necessarily. So if you look at that bike there, they wanted 3000 that's what it was bid for, didn't sell. So they definitely want more. You can actually go up to the desk here, and they will tell you what the reserve price is. That'll give you an idea. Well... I made a bad mistake of letting him buy a bidder's card. So uh, we own another motorcycle. This one's mine. So we're gonna we're all about to get it. She don't even know what it looks like because in the catalog there's no I went pictures. I was in the bathroom and he bought it. Yep. So I actually were bidding on quite a few. Uh, there was an Indian that I was kind of going after. I think it was a 2014 Indian. Wasn't a bad deal. That thing sold for seven or eight thousand dollars. And I stopped at seven. And uh, so we're gonna go see my chopper that I bought. So let's go see what the heck I got. If I got a good deal or not. Not too bad, does it? Better than you thought? Well, they put a Springer front end on it. It's a custom bike. There we go. We bought one. So Professional Monkey coming in 2025. We're coming to the Chopper Shows. Got a kickstar, I got a gonna have to jump up and down on it. It's only got, according to the speedometer, it's only got 2,000 miles on it. He paid seven for this. So what do you think? What do you think? What do you think, Momo? Got front controls. Not too bad. Spark plug wires out a little far. Not too bad, not too bad. Yes? Yeah. He already did that. This is what he said he liked too. Oh, my little floppers? Yeah. Bop him. Bop, 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 bop. I think I probably pretty much fun. Got the keys for it. Smells like that. I think I, smelled it. I think I smelled that one too. It was good. It had good gas on it. I think these all were owned by the same guy. Yeah, I had a little trouble too getting that one out. Oh, did you try this one? Yeah, I was checking this one out too. I looked at all the. I wanted a chopper, but I didn't. I had a budget that I was. I was like, uh, why don't you just go ahead and get a business card and then it's like... So it was her idea of the... Because we're typically media. Oh. So even coming the last couple of years, mistake. she sits in the crowd and she says, you know, sometimes these bikes are so cheap. Yeah, you know, because that's why it's something more... Yeah. One part's going to be the kick of this baby. It's got drag, especially if you it. The flipper flippers. Oh, oh, oh. Three and a sum. It's got a screaming eagle engine. Uh, he's right. I don't know. The ones he bought. No fender in the front. That can't ride in the rain. You have to ride your sports when I ride this because you can't get on this one. So what'd you think about my bike? She left. I did. I left to go to the bathroom. I came back. He's like, we got another bike. And I'm like, well, uh, what? And what happened when you looked in the book? And I said, well, he said that you can look in the book and see a picture. There was no picture in the book. We had to go book. find the... I was like, oh, what did he buy? What'd you think after you seen it? It was bad. I like the color. It wasn't... It was... It's a chopper. 
So the thing we got to worry about is that there's no oil in the primary, which makes me wonder. So I may be doing some motor work soon, so that this one's not going to be going with us to Daytona. We're going to be taking her bike with us, but my bike will be staying home. My chopper there will stay home, and it'll be coming out in 2025. So that's like I said, watch out, professional monkey. Here we come. <laughs> He's going to take it to bike shows, he says. Yeah. What else are you going to do with the chopper? Sure in the hell can't ride it across country. <laughs> Buy us tires and all. See you all later. See you tomorrow. All right. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to our channel. Su subscribe to our family and friends. <laughs> subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Share it with your family and friends. Give us a big thumbs up. Ring that bell for notifications. And we'll see you on the next video. And don't forget about all those links down there. Go down there and check those links out. You might find something interesting you might be interested in. So uh, we'll see you tomorrow. And we might do a live on Saturday. Actually, is this coming out on Saturday? What is today? Today's Thursday. So, so this will be Friday. Friday. So we might be doing a live on Saturday. Because <coughs> we won't be doing one on Sunday. Because we're moving bikes. See you later. Bye.